tonight guilty on two counts. The judgment in a high profile double murder trial. Disgraced lawyer Alex Murdoch convicted of killing his wife and son. Verdict guilty. A grisly crime and the downfall of a powerful American family. Nordstrom is shuttering all Canadian stores and slashing 2,500 jobs. It's a nice store, sad to see it close. The wind down of the upscale U.S. retail chain. There's a lot of pressure for them to save costs. Plus, celebrating a surgical success. I'm still alive and I have the new gift. Incredible results from a rare nerve transfer operation in Quebec. CTV National News with Omar Sachadina. Good evening, everyone. A once prominent American lawyer is now a convicted double murderer after a jury rendered its decision tonight in a captivating criminal trial that uncovered shocking details. It doesn't matter who your family is. It doesn't matter how much money you have or people think you have. If you murder, then justice will be done in South Carolina. What began as an investigation into the killings of Alex Murdoch's wife and son unraveled into allegations he stole millions from largely poor clients and accusations he even tried to cash in on a life insurance payout by staging his own death. CTV's Tom Walters on the verdict, the deception and the downfall. There was nearly six weeks of testimony from more than 70 witnesses, including Alex Murdoch himself. Mr. Murdoch. Are you a family annihilator? You mean like, did I shoot my wife and my son? Yes. No. But it took jurors just three hours to decide he did exactly that. Guilty verdict. In a verdict late today, the disbarred former lawyer was found guilty on all four counts in the killing of his wife Maggie and son Paul. The two were shot to death in a kennel at the family home in South Carolina in June of 2021. The defense argued the case against Alex Murdoch was purely circumstantial. Yes, there's no direct evidence. There's no eyewitness. There's no camera. There's no fingerprints. There's no forensics tying him to the crime. None. The closest thing to a smoking gun was an alibi that went up in flames. For 20 months, Murdoch insisted he had been visiting his mother and nowhere near the kennel when Maggie and Paul were killed. But this video on Paul's cell phone was recorded just minutes before the murders. Come here, Bob. Come here, Cash. Come here, Bob. Cash. And Alex Murdoch's voice was clearly audible in the background. You were at the murder scene with the victims just minutes before they died. It was just one of many lies. I have lied well over a decade. Lied to clients, partners, friends, and family. Charged with nearly 100 financial crimes, Murdoch admitted to stealing from those he represented and his own law firm, to drug addiction, and to trying to stage his own murder. And if owning up to being an habitual liar was meant to persuade jurors that he was telling the truth now, it counts as one more failure in the fall of a once prominent lawyer. Sentencing has been put over until the morning, but with the guilty verdicts tonight, Murdoch faces a minimum of 30 years in prison. Omar? All right, Tom, thanks. Tense moments today at a popular shopping district in Hong Kong when a skyscraper under construction caught fire. Firefighters battled flames as burning debris rained down on the streets below. There were evacuations, but no reports of injuries. Four buildings nearby also caught fire, but were quickly extinguished. And shoppers here will soon have less choice. Nearly a decade after opening its first Canadian store in Calgary, Nordstrom revealed it is calling it quits following other major U.S.-based retailers who failed in Canada. Here's CTV's Annie Bergeron Oliver on the timelines and the impact. All of Canada's 13 Nordstrom and Nordstrom Rack stores will be closed by late June. And no online shopping, the company says, after today. The move means 2,500 workers will be out of a job. It's unfortunate. It's a nice store. It's a nice store. Sad to see it close. So many like stores are closing down in Canada. Don't get it. The Seattle-based department store ended the fourth quarter with net earnings of U.S. $119 million, lower than the $200 million it made in the same period the year before. 
In a statement, the company says it entered Canada in 2014 with a plan to build and sustain a long-term business there. Despite our best efforts, we do not see a realistic path to profitability for the Canadian business. It cost a lot of money just to break even on these stores. And I just think if you look at the Canadian demographic, we just probably didn't have enough business there that could sustain these type of stores. The upscale department store, which promised affordable luxury, follows a similar path as Target, which closed 133 stores in 2015, and Bed Bath & Beyond, currently liquidating its Canadian inventory. Employment lawyers warn Nordstrom's staff may not get much severance. The way that these stores are being closed is a form of bankruptcy, leaving them probably with cents on the dollar of what they would have uh, been entitled to had, uh, had the company simply closed down and terminated these employees. For malls like Ottawa's Rideau Centre, where Nordstrom was a golden tenant, the closure could lead to fewer shoppers. This is going to be a really difficult pair of shoes to, to fill. Um, it, it, it is probably going to require that they become very creative with that space. Gift cards will be accepted until the stores close. As for returns and exchanges, they're only allowed until March 17th. After that, Omar, all sales are final. Any thanks. And Canada's biggest bookstore chain has a warning for past and present employees tonight that their sensitive personal information could land on the dark web because Indigo is refusing to negotiate with hackers who crippled its e-commerce site. CTV's Heather Wright on what could be exposed. More than three weeks after hackers took down its entire e-commerce site, Indigo won't pay to get it back. In a statement, the company says, given we cannot be assured that any ransom payment would not end up in the hands of terrorists or others on sanctions lists, Indigo has determined it would be inappropriate to pay the ransom. As a result, the stolen personal data of current and former Indigo employees, possibly social insurance numbers, addresses and banking information, could be posted on the dark web any day. The fact that we still don't know a month later what the full impact and the uh, how far reaching this has been is to me a very very disappointing the hackers use sophisticated ransomware known as lockbit to gain control of indigo system the tool has ties to russian organized crime and has been described by the fbi as one of the most active and destructive ransomware variants in the world since 2020, hackers using Lockbit have targeted over 1,000 organizations around the world, including Toronto Sick Kids Hospital and the municipalities of St. Mary's, Ontario and Westmount, Quebec. Indigo says so far it has not found evidence any customer data was stolen and has offered employees affected by the breach two years of identity theft monitoring, which experts call woefully inadequate. We need better frameworks around this. The companies offer two years of monitoring, but it's not enough. If there were some laws in place that compelled them to maybe step up a little bit more, maybe we'd be better protected as consumers. In Canada, there is little legislation stipulating how companies must protect employee information, though that could change as a new cybersecurity bill makes its way through Parliament. In the meantime, Indigo employees are being told to be vigilant. Heather Wright, CTV News, Toronto. Heartbreak in the northern Manitoba First Nation of St. Teresa Point tonight after two girls, both just 14 years old, died in the cold. Police say they were found outside a home where the temperature was hovering around minus 23. Uh, crisis uh, response team is actually coming into the community to meet with the leadership and to develop a response to these events. An already deadly avalanche season in western Canada has killed three more people and injured four others near B.C.'s Panorama Mountain Resort. CTV's Alberta Bureau Chief Bill Fortier on the latest backcountry catastrophe. Helicopters were grounded today as the backcountry ski company RK Heliski reels from what it calls its worst day in 53 years of operation. It's with heavy hearts that we're here today. Yesterday, the operator took a crew up near Invermere, BC, and one of the skiers triggered an avalanche. In total, there are 10 people caught up in this avalanche, uh, one of which was a guide. Three people were killed, four more seriously injured. A German news agency is identifying the victims as tourists from Bavaria, 57-year-old Christian Altman, 57-year-old Thomas Kra, and a 34-year-old with the first name Henning. The tour company insists it took all reasonable precautions. This is what we are trained to do as guides, 
as an organization. This skier went up with the same company two weeks ago and says proper training and equipment were provided. I'll never feel unsafe. And everyone, uh, their service is really good. It's been a deadly year in Canada's mountains. 12 people have been killed in avalanches, already the worst year since 2019. And there's still at least another month in this ski season. This has been a horrific avalanche season for British Columbia. Officials have been using controlled avalanches to reduce the risk. But Avalanche Canada says a weak base layer is still an issue hidden even to experts under fresh snow. And these conditions are really tricky to recognize in the field. It's so bad some operators are urging people to rethink backcountry trips even though their livelihood depends on the business. And really I think right now what needs to happen is people need to take like really conservative choices and be diligent making those choices throughout probably the remainder of the season. Among those injured was the guide. The company is not naming him but says though he was seriously hurt he's now in stable condition and is being taken care of. Omar. All right, Bill, thank you. A 35-year-old Ottawa man is facing a dozen charges, including arson and criminal negligence, in connection with a construction site explosion that injured 12 people. The blast rocked the Ottawa suburb of Orleans, destroying several homes and forcing the evacuation of others. Firefighters initially suspected a gas leak, but investigators now believe criminal activity is to blame. Manitoba became the latest province to ban Chinese-owned TikTok from government-issued devices because of security concerns. This comes as a parliamentary committee looking into foreign election tampering heard from several high-profile witnesses today, including the director of CSIS. CTV's Ottawa Bureau Chief Joyce Napier on what they said. The head of Canada's spy agency told MPs today that foreign interference is an enduring threat. The government of China. And that the Chinese Communist Party is pouring more money into a department dedicated to meddling in other countries' affairs. The budget of an organization dedicated to foreign interference is now larger than the entire uh, overt diplomatic work that the, the, the PRC is engaging in. This is why um, uh, the president of China, Xi Jinping, calls the UFWD one of its magic weapons. But the outcome of Canada's elections was not impacted, he said. The MPs on the committee were told Canada was clearly one of Beijing's targets and that the Prime Minister and other ministers were briefed regularly. We cannot totally shield ourselves from foreign interference. And Canada's election watchdog said her office received more than 175 complaints of foreign interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections. There were 158 complaints concerning the 2019 election dealing with 10 situations and 16 complaints regarding 13 situations for 2021 and two complaints recently since November. This review is ongoing as I speak. But so far, no RCMP investigation into the allegations. We did not receive any actionable intelligence uh, that would warrant us to initiate a criminal investigation. And when asked whether Canada should establish a public foreign agent registry, a list of individuals who act on behalf of foreign governments or companies, the answer by the head of CSIS was clear. It would be a good idea, he said. And once again today, the opposition called for a public inquiry into allegations of foreign interference, pressuring the prime minister to call one, something he has not endorsed so far. Omar? All right, Joyce, thanks. New Brunswick's highest court said it had no choice but to reduce the sentence of the man who murdered three Mounties in Moncton in 2014, allowing him to apply for parole sooner. This severely devalues the lives of the police officers that were taken, and it's a slap in the face to the every member that wears this uniform. Justin Bork was automatically sentenced to life in prison for killing Constables Dave Ross, Fabrice Givondin, and Douglas Larch in 2014. The three consecutive sentences meant he would have had to wait 75 years for parole. But today's decision means he can apply for it in 25 years. The move stems from a Supreme Court ruling last year that struck down a law allowing parole ineligibility periods to be extended beyond 25 years. A woman in northern Manitoba is coming forward tonight to speak about a tragedy she believes could have been prevented if it happened in a major city and not in a northern indigenous community. CTV's Manitoba Bureau Chief Jill Makishan has the exclusive details. 
In the North, life or death emergencies often aren't handled in minutes, but hours. Time this pregnant woman didn't have. My boyfriend seen his leg come up. Seen his leg come up. Adrian Menno's baby was breech. She needed emergency help, but when she arrived at the Norway House Hospital, she says she was put in a room waiting hours in labor for a plane to arrive. I didn't feel like I mattered. <laughs> When she was finally medevaced to the city, she knew her son, a boy she named Jasper, wouldn't survive. Well, I got to Thompson, and the um, baby was born within four minutes, and I got to the hospital. But he was born, stillborn. People living on Northern First Nations have long called for better services and better facilities. An hour away in Pimichikamak Cree Nation, this nursing station is supposed to have 13 primary care nurses each day. Information obtained by CTV News shows there's been an average seven nurses since last summer. The population that we have in the community is 8,000 people, and it's 2,000 off reserve. Two new health centers are now being built in this region. Totaling $180 million, the facilities will offer dialysis and palliative care in Norway House, and in Pimichikamak, an emergency room and ambulatory care but leaders on both First Nations have questions. The facility is almost done. The concern that we have is we have to fill it up with the physicians, the nurses, and the doctors. Indigenous Services Canada said employees from the existing facilities will be moved to the new ones, and final staffing numbers for both new health centres have yet to be determined. This woman, still traumatised by her care, is sceptical. I just don't want this happening to anybody else. The new Norway House Health Center is expected to open in summer, and there's no mention it will include a birthing unit. Omar. All right, Joe, thank you. Coming up, terrifying turbulence. It got really bumpy, and then at one point, the plane completely just, like, dropped. The flight that sent food and passengers flying. Plus... I don't not love Winnipeg. A famous Hollywood star and a new catchphrase for a Canadian city. The FBI has charged a Michigan man with threatening to kill state government officials who are Jewish. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel says police told her that she was the target of a heavily armed defendant. Court documents say he threatened on Twitter to kill anyone who is Jewish in the Michigan government. The case comes amid a rise in anti-Semitism in the U.S. Two weeks ago, hate crime charges were laid against a suspect after two Jewish men were wounded after being shot as they left a synagogue. Britain's spy agency MI5 is admitting failure in stopping the 2017 suicide bombing at the Manchester Arena. I have found a significant missed opportunity to take action that <coughs> might have prevented the attack. A final inquiry found intelligence services had information about the attacker before the bombing, but didn't act swiftly enough to prevent the deadliest attack in the country. 22 people died and hundreds were injured by a homemade bomb near the end of an Ariana Grande concert. A 59-year-old station manager in Greece faces manslaughter charges after two trains collided Tuesday night. At least 57 people were killed in the disaster. A lawyer for the station manager says his client accepts part of the responsibility, while protesters blamed government for a second day over long-standing problems with the rail service. A Lufthansa flight from Texas to Germany had to make an emergency landing after the plane flew into rough skies. Lufthansa Airbus A330 experienced extreme turbulence. Video from on board shows meal trays and debris from one end of the aisle to the other. The plane completely just like dropped and everything, all the food and everything just flew everywhere. And it was pretty scary, honestly, for a little bit. Seven people were taken to hospital with minor injuries after the plane touched down in Virginia. Still ahead, tunnel vision. A secret of the pyramids revealed. Scientists in Egypt got a high-tech glimpse into the past when they discovered a hidden internal corridor in the Great Pyramid of Giza. The chamber above the main entrance of Khufu's pyramid was located using modern scanning technology. 
an endoscope captured this footage of the 18 square meter space. Its function is still unknown, but such corridors often lead to further archaeological discoveries. Night gazers will have a second chance to see the celestial kiss of the solar system's brightest planets, Venus and Jupiter, tonight. The close encounter or superconjunction happens when two planets pass each other, appearing to be much closer together on Earth. At their closest, Jupiter and Venus will be half a degree apart or a moon's width apart before drifting away. And the city of Winnipeg got some love, well, sort of, from a Hollywood star on late night television. Does Michael B. Jordan love Winnipeg? <laughs> I don't not love Winnipeg. Is Michael? Tourism Winnipeg seemed to like that answer, tweeting, thanks for providing us with our next tourism campaign slogan. Then superimposed this t-shirt on a picture of the actor. After the break. Nerve transfer surgery consists of taking a nerve that still functions and transferring it to a nerve that is not functioning. The innovative surgery that's giving new hope to quadriplegic patients. We have a glimpse tonight into the promising outcome of a rare surgery that's given hope to a patient who has dealt with so many challenges. CTV's Vanessa Lee on how a nerve transfer procedure helped a Quebec woman. It's little things like this most of us take for granted. Not Jeanne Carrière, who says she was given the gift of new hands. Before it was like that, completely closed, and now... Uh, and if I put my hands over here, we, we can see that it, it open uh, wider. In December of 2021, she barely survived a 70-meter fall. She broke her neck and became paralyzed from the chest down. I was able to imagine myself in a wheelchair and not being able to walk, but my hands, that is too important for me because it's my independence. The 27-year-old is now able to cook, eat on her own, and brush her teeth again, thanks to a nine-hour procedure performed by few hospitals around the world, including Maisonneuve Rosemont in Montreal. Nerve transfer surgery consists of taking a nerve that still functions and transferring it to a nerve that is not functioning. Doctors say this is just the beginning of Carrière's recovery who feels her hands getting stronger every day. Wow. Yeah. She feels lucky to be able to continue her dream job as a screenwriter and says the best chapter is yet to come. Vanessa Lee, CTV News, La Chute, Quebec. So great to see that progress. And that's a snapshot of this Thursday. Heather Wright will be here tomorrow. For all of us at CTV National News, thank you for watching and good night.